Hello, this is Steve from Beto's Leatherworks, and today's project is this pair of Allen Edmund Hampstead. Now, we're going to do something a little different this time. Um, we are entering these in the Netherlands Shoe Repair Contest. Uh, the contest is basically um, anybody can enter it who's in the business, a student, uh, an employer, employee. Um, basically, you just have to replace one full sole on a pair and then the second pair you do a half sole and a heel this one is going to be our full sole now what we're going to do here we're going to change some things around a little bit this is a 360 welt degree welt and we're going to convert it into 270 the 360 being the welt goes all the way around the shoe the 270 is basically from heel the ankle bone here all the way to the front, back to the ankle bone. Now with most of the 270 degree welts, the heels are narrower because there's no welt there. I say most of them because not all of them are like that. Some of them, some of them do have a heel brand. They make it a little bit wider. They make it look like the welt is going all the way around. Now we're gonna convert these into a 270 degree welt. We're gonna do a fiddle waist. We're gonna narrow the waist right here, okay? We're gonna make it basically almost like a custom European style shoe. It's not gonna look like this once it gets done. The uppers will remain the same, but it'll be much sleeker with a narrower heel. We're gonna raise the heel a little bit, give it maybe a little bit of a Cuban heel stance. And uh, most of the custom made shoes have these little details and um, they make it kind of unique in their own right where, where it's not a standard chunky 360 degree welt. And uh, we're going to enter into the contest, and we're going to keep our fingers crossed, and I'll let you guys know what I did. All right, let's get started. All right, let's tear these apart. Now, we're not going to salvage much uh, from the bottom of the shoe anyway. I guess people like me talking on my videos, on my boot video. People, a couple of people were like, hey man, ASMR, what the hell is that? I'm out of here. You know, you can't please everybody, right? You just can't. If you don't like something, don't watch it. It's okay. Sometimes you gotta, you know, change some things around a little bit. You don't want to hear my witty commentary all the time, do you? It's funny, there are, there are people who say I talk too much in my videos. And then when I stop talking, they complain I'm not talking enough. <laughs> oh, go figure. Well, I can't please everybody in this world, I guess. We got the sole off and now you guys see this fiberboard piece here older Allen Edmonds have these right basically this is not a shank because you can't drive the nails through the footbed to cinch them together what the manufacturer thought of is adding this so the nails can cinch to that and it'll keep it on. The problem is the pattern of the nails too wide for it to catch the car, the fiberboard. Some of them do, some of them, as you see, don't. There's, there's the nail holes there, so it's kind of useless to, to have this to have this in here because it doesn't do anything. It's just a piece of fiberboard. I mean, it was a good idea, I guess, by the manufacturer, but sometimes. You know, implementing a, an idea and seeing if it works is different than coming up with the idea. So, all right, let's continue. And the welt is off. Well, half the welt anyway. Most of the time these come off real fast. Because I'm recording, 
it's going to be stubborn and break into pieces. That made me look bad. All right. <sighs> Oh, these shoes are donated by the way they're not they're not for a particular customer I love tearing stuff apart ever since I was a little kid I would take things apart sometimes I would leave them because I couldn't figure out how to put them back together <laughs> oh anyway so this is you got to be careful with these staples suck look at these sharp things man they get you too you got to be careful all right let's continue all right so we took it apart that's the same footbed wet the uppers stretched it over the last this is the Allen Edmonds 65 last in 10 E the shoe was 10 and a half but nothing that matters you know it's just because it's never going to be worn it's going to be for a show shoe that's it so we're going to let that dry we already see it getting nice and narrow design right there tighten the waist brought the heel in once the sole, everything comes on here, you're not going to see all that detail because, again, this is going to be a 270 degree welt. It's going to stop to there. So it's going to have a much more narrower design. It's getting there. Let's continue. All right, so at this stage here, we took, we took everything apart. We took the old gemming out. This is the gemming that's where the welt attaches to the uppers. We're gonna do only welt from here to here. The rest is gonna be tucked in for a narrow waist. And I chiseled the toe a little bit. Chiseled, you know, kind of shaved it down, gave it some different shape than what it was. Now the lining is stretched and glued to the gemming. Now we're gonna do a toe counter. This is elastic. You heat this fab fabric. You heat this material up and you can stretch it to any shape you want. Once it dries, it hardens up and it'll be the toe counter. Then we'll stretch the uppers over on top of it. Secure the waist and the back here. And then we'll start forming the sole, the outsole for it. All right, let's continue. So far, so good. Making some progress. Got the tail counter in there. Gonna let that dry. All right, let's continue. All right, so it's taking shape. Now you've got to be really careful here because the tw the three sixty degree welts, the leather doesn't tuck in far enough convert it so you gotta you gotta tuck in enough when the sole comes in there like that you can't see the nails but you can't tuck in too much or else this distance right here will become too short and also remember this is not going to be worn right this is just for a show so we can tuck it in a little bit more than normal now we get to put the welt on there with our jerk needle <laughs> 
I usually use that joke. It's a jerk needle, man, not a jerk with a needle. I know, that, that gets old after a while. <laughs> All right. Since we stretched the uppers, we're not stitching in the same holes, existing holes, we're gonna make new holes because the uppers have stretched further than they were. This is the Alan Edmonds 65 last. Every last, every shape is different. Every outcome is different. And depending on the shape of the last, obviously, because that's what, that's what the shoe, you know, is formed around. So the end result is gonna be the shape of the, the last. Now would I do this, uh, would I do this for a customer? Not to this extent, but I have done it. Um, we did a pair for the Elegant Oxford a couple of years back. But that was really, it was a, um, it was a true 270 degree. This is not even a 270, this is not even a 270 degree. 270 degree is was, was from here to here. This is half, I don't know what degree it is, but maybe 180 degree. But for Elegant Oxford, we did all the way from here to here. And it was a pair of Allen Nevins also. That video is somewhere on my list. Maybe I'll put a link to it and you guys can watch it. So we'll continue stitching all the way around. All right, let's continue. All right, we've got our cork filled in. We have shank inside. This is just to kind of give it a hump at the waist. Because we want to kind of give it a curve, like a fiddle back type. Something like that. All right. Let's continue. Hammer time. <laughs> I almost forgot. Man, it's coming along pretty good. All right, she's getting there. All right, let's continue. All right, we are getting there. Now we rough trim this hole. Okay. Heel base is gonna come on. I see that detail right on the inside there here, inside of the heels. You can see it better this way. This is called the heel notch or heel step off, I think it's called. 
heel step off. Damn, I gotta figure out what that's called. It's kind of cool though. After it gets done, it looks like the sole and the heel, the back of the sole and the heel are together, and this kind of floats right into the right into the heel base there. Now I'm debating whether I should do a a closed channel, which is hidden stitch, blind stitch, or just do an exposed channel. Right? There's no, they don't take any points off, or they don't give you any points for doing a blind stitch or closed stitch or an open stitch so it's just i gotta make a decision i think visually i think it'll look kind of smooth without any visibility of any stitches but i don't know just a lot more work than than if it's worth doing you know here on the waist here we're going to put wood pegs very small wooden pegs if you look at the, some of the high-end, high-end shoes like um, St. Crispin's, for example, they'll have nice wood pegs in the shank area right there. So we were thinking about doing two rows of it. We'll see how it goes. All right, let's continue. <laughs> All right, we're going to flip a coin because I can't decide whether I should do an open stitch or a closed stitch. Okay, heads, we do blind stitch, which means opening up the leather and stitching and closing it. And tails, we're going to do exposed stitch, all right? Here goes nothing. You hey, son of a... Really? That doesn't count. All right, let's shut it down. It's tails. I guess we're going to do an open stitch.
too bad, not too shabby. I think we're gonna drill a couple more holes right here because it doesn't look looks like there's an empty spot right there. Visually it's starting to bug me when I look at it. Yep, much better. It's more of a it kind of flows a little better compared to that side. Let's continue. See, coffee is ready. Oh, shit. This is the coffee. Coffee time. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Beza. All right, let's take a little break. Fuel up a little bit so my hands can shake. So you guys can complain. Your hands are shaking, man. Somebody asked me one day, you know, in one of the comments... I told them I was a recovering crack addict. The funny part is I think he believed me. <laughs> All right, now we got that protected. Now we can start working on the edge and the bottom. All right, let's continue.
Okay. Wait. So next what we do is we get a little bit of wax and sit there and give it a nice shine and it shall be ready to go. All right, so this is the second pair in the contest. So the categories are on one pair, you do one full sole and heel. The second pair, you need to do a half sole and heel on both shoes. And I chose these Carminas, beautiful loafers, tassel loafers. So this is the half sole and heel job. If you look real close, you see that line going across the name? That's where the seam is from the new to the old leather. If you look real carefully right there, you'll see that that joint right there. See if I can show it on the camera. Yeah, right about there. <laughs> so this is my second um, second pair. But I do green stitches again. Kind of goes good with that saddle tan color. It's a beautiful shoe. So this is my second pair. All right, wish me luck. Okay, so today is the 30th of December. We are done with this project. This will be boxed up and shipped to the Netherlands. We have till end of January to get it there and hopefully if I win something I'm going to be going in March of 2024 so you guys won't see this video for a few months and um, hopefully I'll connect with you guys again with my trophy in my hand but we'll see what happens all right thanks again for joining me I appreciate it share share what else thumbs up um what else what else i can't think anymore thank you for joining me i appreciate it we'll see you guys again next project take care nominated like a lot of times for the lacquer award which means it's nice and it's like it's not as Michelin but it's not very uh, very off actually so yeah really nice restaurant highly recommended All right, so I made it to the Netherlands, and um, I'm here with Theo. Theo was the person that that I lost to, basically. So when we entered the contest, we made a little side bet. I told him, I said, um, "Tell you what, let's bet on a steak dinner. Whoever loses has to buy the person's steak dinner." And of course, the bastard won. He beat me by a couple of points. Well, we both won gold, but he beat me by a couple of points. So I had on dinner. But unfortunately, COVID came around, and um, I didn't get a chance to come to Amsterdam to pay my dues. So the following year, well, that was 2020. The following year was 2021. I said, I tell you what, why don't we do double or nothing? I said, okay, let's do double or nothing. Well, wouldn't you know it, he won again. Yeah, he's really good, so he beat me twice. So now I'm here paying my dues so we had a sushi place and and we're having dinner and uh and this is theo all right so this is mr theo hi everyone so yeah my name is theo uh, i'm from the netherlands amsterdam based uh, my shop name is uh, shoe spa amsterdam also you can find it on the instagram uh, 
Yeah, so uh, it, it, uh, I entered the contest three times. In the first two times I've had a battle with Steve. Uh, luckily I won. Alright, so Theo, uh, when we first made a bet, I was so confident that I would beat you. And the way that you looked at me like you had no issues whatsoever. So how was the feeling about that? How did you, were you sure you were going to win or was I, was I good, you know, good competitor or what? Well, it was my first time entering uh, the competition. Uh, I posted a lot of my work uh, throughout the years and people were expecting me to get gold, which gave me like some weight on my shoulder, so I was not sure. I even texted you that I was gonna bail out on the last moment. I remember that, yes. <laughs> and those last couple of days were like freaky. Uh, so yeah, not sure, not sure at all. Uh, because yeah, I'm such a perfectionist. In the end, I just saw so many flaws. I was making myself crazy. Yes. Just entered it and uh, I didn't expect to win. But yeah, uh, did win. I did get 197 points out of the 200. Yeah, 200, 200 is the tops. Yes. 200 was the top, yeah. So I'm not sure what you. Uh, I think it was. I think Moran was 195. Could no? be, uh, yeah, I think 195. Yeah, so we were. We were very close. Yeah, and high because that's uh, it's it's almost like a perfect score. So that's why I'm here uh, paying my dues to to Mr. Theo. He also won a shoe shine competition if i'm not mistaken yeah that's correct and um and um, i'm gonna let him explain to you about that so tell us about the shoe shining competition to you uh, the shoe shine competition was like something totally different it was nothing to do with repairs it was uh, just, just about mirror shining shoes uh, which i always like to do so uh, i took the opportunity uh, for the dutch uh, trunk show and uh, yeah, they organized uh, the shoe shining contest, which was great. It was held in Amsterdam, so it was a how you say it, like a home home competition. Yeah. So yeah, all, also some weight on my shoulders. Not sure what to expect. I expected some big, big competition. It was not really as big as uh, as, uh, as I thought it was. So yeah, took it easily home. Uh, yeah, also like uh, nice to meet uh, the people from Saphir and some shoe brands and some uh, shoe snobs as well. And where did you get, you got invited somewhere? I, I can't remember where it was. To the, first, uh, the, the Netherlands royalty, the king or something? Yeah, yeah but that was due because of the uh, repair competition. Oh, I see, yeah. okay. I, I was invited with lunch with the king, which, which was crazy. It's something... Uh, that's incredible. Yeah, that's something uh, like hardly anybody does. So uh, together with some other people that did something uh, small but special, uh, yeah, that we got invited. That was awesome. I think you've done good so far. Okay, today we are visiting my friend Theo's shop in the Netherlands. And this is it right here. He's in a good location. Nice, nice traffic flow. Houses. Alright, let's go in and say hello. What's up? What's up? Mr. Theo, introduce your father. Introduce him, come on. Say, this is my father. This is my dad. There you go. How long have you guys been here? We've been here for? Uh, from 2000. So wow, 24 nice. Years. 24 years. So this is the store here where all the magic happens, huh? I thought everything Tio knows about the business. Right, Tio? Yes, Steve, you did. <laughs> nice merchandise. Oh, 
I like the windows, how it's nice and the view yeah, yeah. of the street, you know? Yes. It's beautiful. Uh, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> I didn't realize that. <laughs> He's too humble to show off all his trophies, but this is uh, one of his little wins that he got. He was the shoe shine champion in the Netherlands. Netherlands or the world? Netherlands. 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 Can't beat the Japanese, sorry. Oh, the Japanese are number one. And he was, uh, and he went to, what's his name's the house? Uh, the, yeah, the, I was invited to the, to the palace from the king. Nice. Yeah, so. Maybe you'll have some pictures to give me, I'll share it on the, on the video. Just one picture, because there were no pictures allowed. Oh, wow. So well, you have to take their professional pictures, photographers? Yeah, so the photographers. Okay. Picture. So there's one picture and I'll, uh, I'll send it to you. All right, that's good. All right, let's continue. And we are here in Lucerne, Switzerland. I hope I'm pronouncing that right. We are here to see Mr. Dapper. Let's go and check it out. There he is, Mr. Dapper. What's up, buddy? Good to see you again. Good morning. So we're gonna look around his shop real quick. The beautiful items he has for sale. This is not your normal shoe repair shop. Very classy. Some of the folks in the US should, uh, should watch and learn, including myself, how to properly keep a shop clean. It's a very beautiful shop. All right. Yes, sir. Why don't you introduce yourself to the viewers? Hello, my name is Albert. I am the owner from, of Mr. Dapper Shoe Store. And uh, we make the shoe repairs and we sell it shoes, also bespoke shoes with uh, alligator and crocodile. How long have you been here, Albert? In this store, I have till uh, four years. And how long have you been doing this? 17 years. 17 years. Got beautiful shoes here, double monk strap alligator. Wow. Now the customers can order these for custom orders? Yes, we can make this of uh, bespoke with uh, all different colors and fittings. Nice. And all style. It's beautiful, beautiful. Also, he sells handbags too? Yes, the handbags coming from Ascot from London. Ascot is a very good company? Yes, that make a very high quality and make also customizing. For those of you guys who, doesn't, who don't know Ascot, look them up. Yes. It's a beautiful, beautiful items. What is the, what is your uh, Instagram handle? My Instagram is Mr. Dapper. Mr. Mr. Dapper, all right. So look them up, guys.
so I hope you've been enjoying this ride so far. We are right on the outskirts of Franken, Germany. Franken, I think I pronounced that right. On the way back to Amsterdam for a couple of days and then we'll fly back home. And just thought I'd give you guys some scenery, you know, uh, on the road. Um, there's lots of, lots of little towns along the way and um, a lot of farmlands, um, not really big cities at all on the, on the way to back to Amsterdam. Uh, the drive has been great. You know, everybody is staying out of the left lane. You can go as fast as you want. And uh, people, people, they try to pass on the left lane and get right back on the right to get out of the way. So just the faster flow and traffic stays to the left. Um, no honking horns. I haven't heard anybody honk any horns. So in Amsterdam, it's a $250 fine if you honk your horn. You can't hear anything in a city. The, the hustle bustle of the city, there's bicycles everywhere right and they're just weaving in and out and nobody's hitting each other and nobody's screaming yelling hey get them out of the way nothing i mean it was it's just so quiet like that and no honking horns i'm not used to it it's just eerie you know so anyway hope you guys been enjoying the scenery all right we'll see you guys again let's continue so check this out every time you've got a traffic jam people on the left lane stay to the left and people on the right lane stay to the right. It leaves an empty lane in the center for emergency vehicles. I mean, that's so cool, you know? What respect, I, I like that, it's so it's so neat to see. Now, you don't see it now because we're moving now, but when we were stopped back there, everybody was to the left and everybody was to the right. So center lane was just open for emergency vehicles. Very cool. All right, welcome back. We are home safe. The shoes made it with me, the trophy made it with me, and uh, I had a great time. It was great to see uh, my old friends um, that I communicate with online all the time, and um, and I, I don't get to see them, obviously, because they're overseas. Now we just gotta make room for the trophy case to fit these in. I'm running out of room. So I got a silver. Um, this contest was all about points, okay? And you have to follow the rules. And, I, and I, I'm stubborn that way. I, I, I didn't follow the, most of the rules. Um, sometimes my creativity just kind of takes over me. It's, it, it's overload. And, um, but you have to follow the rules. And of course, Theo and I made another bet for next year that, you know, see who's going to win. But I've got good chances this time because I'm going to follow directions. All right. I hope you enjoyed the video. I know it was a little bit of a, a different, you know, format than what I normally do with you guys. Uh, just to give you guys a little bit of background on the trip that I took. And I hope you enjoyed all that. Okay, um, share, comment, thumbs up, um, subscribe. And uh, we'll see you guys again on the next video. Take care.